Okay, good. Uh, started working for DuPont in 1937 at Old Hickory in the power department. And uh, I was very anxious to do the best I could, so I took a lot of, made a special effort to learn everything I could. worked uh, on a number of power projects uh, during World War II. Yes. And at what point, or where were you when you were told to return to Wilmington, the DuPont uh, headquarters in Wilmington? Yeah, at that point I was a power superintendent at Childersburg Ordnance. That was in Alabama? In Alabama. Okay, now, since you haven't done this before, I'm going to coach you a little you, bit. Please do. It's as if he, it's... You see, your answers have to be. Let's stop take for a second. Fine. So why don't you why don't you do this? Let's let's just say you know just tell us how you started out and start from the beginning. Except you're you you've gone through childhood and early yeah and that that whole yeah. thing. Well, let's go ahead and start uh, back in World War II with uh, the being the power superintendent at Childersburg, Alabama. When what did you find out? Or when did you find out? If you know. About uh, Hanford. Well, uh, Lyman Darling was the general DuPont man for power for all the military explosives, and uh, I had worked with him at Old Hickory and uh, Indiana and Alabama, and he kind of picked on me to, as his uh, right hand man. So when he started uh, getting stuff together for Hanford, I uh, he came and uh, that's when they picked me to uh, be his understudy here during the construction period. And uh, I was sent to Wilmington, works technical, and told about what the whole thing was, fortunately, which helped me deal with here, where, of course, people weren't cleared mostly. And uh, after a little time in Wilmington, they transferred me out here. And uh, I guess that was in 43. And uh, I worked uh, as a liaison. I was still an operations member, but but, but the only one <laughs> uh, for a while with construction. And so what I did, my job, was to just stay with construction when they built all these facilities and be sure that I knew how they would operate and if there was a problem to get them to change it. And that was how I got started at Hanford. You became involved with the construction and later the operation of the B reactor. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I worked with... Uh, there was an area engineer when he started building this area named Litchfield. It was He was good to work with, and, but I almost became part of his crew because I was with him all the time watching what he was doing. And uh, uh, I, when uh, that happened up until the time that we started operations and getting crews together to handle things, at that time, I had knew what we had to do, and uh, my job then was to be sure the equipment was working right and the operators were trained so that whatever crew I had on at the time, we knew that we had to keep this going once it, it got started. So I had four crews of uh, about 16 people of course, I had the river pump. I had the power facilities, which I didn't see here today. They've been. I didn't have any really responsible uh, jobs with the operation with the reactor area. There was another group handling that, so mine was strictly power. And but there was plenty to do with river pump houses, reservoirs, uh, filtration, and on down. And uh, when the time come that the area was ready to go, uh, 
Lyman Darling had been off, and he was helping recruit operators. We got them from all over, and I took them. I, I had to train them to run these things, and uh, it didn't matter. I couldn't remember now what crew was on when this thing was started because all of the four of the crews had to be competent. And all we did was get the running for several days so that we knew we could get cooling water to this reactor. And uh, uh, the reactor supervisor was working with his crew here, which I didn't know what he was doing, except uh, I did have a hunch that he was going to hear by that day. I didn't do anything that day but visit. I learned more today than I did that day. <laughs> were, were you present? Uh, on... I was present when they triggered it. But it wouldn't have made any difference. I could have been in Pasco or anywhere because all I did out here was just to stand by it to see that if something happened, I was backing up my own operating crew. I had the crew to do the entire job. And what was the responsibility of your operating crew at that time? The responsibility of the crew at that time was to be darn sure that they could keep water coming to this reactor. That was their job. During the course of your time here, did you have occasion to visit or talk with uh, some high-level scientists such as Fermi? The uh, uh, Most of the people I knew and can remember were when I was getting the area ready were high level. Uh, uh, Gil Church was heading it for DuPont and he had uh, various supervisors of which were doing various things and I needed their help when I was getting set up with equipment and things like that. Did you have occasion to escort uh, uh, Fermi through the area? Well. Fermi made a number of visits out here, and uh, he came to the He He liked to uh, check what was being done in the area as well as the uh, reactor area. And, of course, that was a power responsibility, so I kind of felt air to escort him on the most of the area when he was out here. Uh, most people didn't know him. He was labeled as farmer, and, uh, but uh, I got to know him quite well, yeah. Could you tell us, while we're, here, while we're there, tell us a little bit about Fermi. What kind of guy was he? Could you tell us a little bit about Fermi himself? What type of person was he? Well, of course he was very smart, <laughs> <laughs> but at the time it was just a kind of a, Ordinary, uh, I, I developed a friendship with him because he's just a normal person, and uh, we got along pretty well. As a matter of fact, on one of the inspections I just made, I saw the rod drop on this for the first time because he was checking that, but he made an area inspection before. So I just accompanied him in here, and I got to see that. <laughs> that was really his observation, but I was just with him. Did General Groves ever visit the facility? I have never seen, I didn't remember ever seeing General Groves out here, but I did work at the 145 building before I got on, and uh, he was a constant visitor out there, as were a lot of the DuPonts and top level people. We experimented with trying to treat, see what water treatment was necessary to be satisfactory for this cooling job. After you uh, finished the work here at the B reactor, what did you do? Well, it was just another day in the work. Uh, we, we, we were pleased that the reactor started. That was our, <laughs> our first uh, worry about it because we had to keep water going until the reactor supervisor here decided to pull the rods. And we didn't know when that was. was. We didn't know what shift we'd have on. It didn't make any difference. And all I was doing was just uh, visiting almost with my shifts they were working. As soon as they were done, I moved on down to D area to work on there and do the same type of work. 
They did that work at the D reactor site and any other reactor sites out here? Uh, as soon as it got done with D, I went on down to F. That was just my job was to see that the cooling water supply was made right and the reactor, I mean the power supervising crews could handle it. They knew how to do it. And that took about four shifts per reactor area and there's three of them. So we had about 12 shifts times <laughs> uh, the uh, 16 men each to train. It was a pretty good training job, but they, I, I was pretty fortunate. Where did you go? Up? To, to be for a second and, and talk about while we're on it, uh, and then we'll just go a little more linear into the other stuff. Um, about the problems with the with during construction, the, the, what were the problems solved? What were some of the problems you encountered just trying to construct uh, this area? Well, they were. One of the jobs that I was doing in following uh, construction was to be sure that uh, the equipment was constructed and set up in a way that would work. And I had been through already several ordnance plants on this, so I had a pretty good uh, thing. I know that there was a time when we had to have a lubrication order in the stores. And uh, uh, it hadn't come moment yet. But I had had enough experience on the other plants that I gave stores the full lubricating requirements for my power equipment. And uh, there was times when, uh, well, if a pump wouldn't work right, I would have to, if it was, I'd have to get Litch to change it. He was much interested in getting something to work. And the more he got upset about some of the things I asked, the quicker he got it done. <laughs> Did you have occasion to have to um, use alternative equipment? Was there occasion to use steam locomotives for power here? Well, that was over at 145. Yeah, we, we used uh, whatever we could get there. That was a quick, that was an early job. And we did. We used four steam locomotives for steam. And uh, uh, I tell you, we it we had all kinds of problems there because we it was early. There was not much tools, but uh, they were hauling materials in from all over the United States and dumping them up there. We could go up and get anything we could find. <laughs> so we were able to get a lot of things. For this area, did you have to obtain any special equipment? Uh, I don't recall for this area that it was pretty well. I had to get some help Litch get some equipment for over there because at the time we were building that and running it, uh, the drawings weren't even all here from Wilmington. So Litch and I built part of it without the Wilmington drawings. I, I knew what was wanted and we were able to do it. And it must have worked. <laughs> I didn't get any complaints. And, uh, what, what about, can you ask him about the working conditions, how long the workday was, um, where his living conditions were, some of the, what he did for entertainment after work? When you came out here in 1943, where did you live? I lived in Pasco. Uh, they, uh, Lyman Donnelly had uh, some uh, places that he found that I could stay and they put me in one nose. It was a railroad engineer and his wife and it was a nice place. I had the upstairs level with one other DuPont worker which changed from time to time. Did you ever live out here at the Hanford Project or stay out here? Did I ever stay out here? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I have stayed out here because our hours went eight to four. It was to get the job done, and uh, what was what was your normal work day? For me, well, I I tried to get out here. At, uh, we started early to get ahead of the shifts, and a lot of the times I had a 
place in one of the men's barracks at Hanford and uh, would stay there or come out. And uh, then... Uh, well, how long would you stay on the job when you would get out here? Well... I guess I always mostly left with uh, uh, something. It'd be a, maybe a couple hours summing things up and trying to think of what I was going to do the next day. <laughs> but well, when you were you putting in eight-hour days here? Was it a regular shift for you? What were the work? No, I was for? out here. I guess every day uh, for to, during the startup. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I I didn't stay real long hours unless I, uh, and uh, later they, I was riding with uh, some of the supervisors. I was given the company car so I could go whenever I wanted to and come back. What were the yeah, living conditions? I'll tell you what, let's, yeah. let's, let's go, because um, I, I think it's getting a little, we're getting a little Tired. tired. Yeah. So let's let's go and just ask a couple of questions specifically about the Marines. Um, well, about about uh, you knew you knew about the reactor. Were you aware of what it was what it was producing and what it would be used for? What is that? Were you aware what the reactor was producing and what it would be used for? How much, oh yeah. How much, how much did you know about yeah. the actual? About they when they transferred me to. Wilmington to come on this job. Uh, they gave me a secret clearance and set me down at a table in uh, Wilmington Works Technical with all the story. I, I got the whole works, what they were trying to do with the plutonium and the, the urgency to get it and the size of the bomb they were trying to build. And the, I was completely cleared when I came here on, on uh, objects. But I was about the only one in operation that knew, and they they thought that would help me deal with construction and and getting. And I don't know how much. I assume that Litchfield knew. I don't know who all knew, but mostly there wasn't many people around that knew what it was all about. They just did what they were told. <laughs> and of course, my job was pretty simple. I says. Your job is to make sure we can get cooling water here and, and be consistent. That's all I had to tell them. That's all my job, my assignment was. And uh, I, I just had to keep working, and uh, that was all. I had it pretty easy. <laughs> can you tell us how you got water from the river to the front face? Can you walk us through the process of how you set up the construction to get water out of the river to this reactor building? Can you tell us how you got water from the river to the reactor building? Oh uh, well, there was a pump house down there, uh, which I guess still exists. And uh, of course, I had a pump operator down there, and they were building that. And uh, that's how it was. Uh, the full flow water was pumped from there up to. A, we had a reservoir, which I don't know if it's here or not. I guess not here. And. Uh, uh, that was f kept filled, so we had gravity water from the reservoir there if, we, if something happened to the pump house. And that flowed over, then let's see where it went to. We had a filler plant. So we had to filter the water and get it treated. And I'm not sure about this because most of the areas, I think, had deaterators. I thought we had deaterators here to deaerate the water. But uh, we didn't have uh, chemical plants and the refrigeration that D had. We just hoped this would start up without it. <laughs> and uh, then the main building was our 190 building where we really had to give them the water supply they needed. And if anything happened, give them emergency water pressures. And I had a, an operator in the valve pit down here they could switch valves and bring in water from other spots if uh, he had to. And uh, that was, I did get into this area to uh, see him regularly, but uh, other than that, I didn't know much or 
security was tight. I wasn't supposed to know much about this area. It wasn't my job. <laughs> my job was simple. Get the cooling water here so it wouldn't fail. Were you involved at all with getting the water out of the reactor and back into the river? Did I what? Were you involved with getting the water out of the reactor and back into the river again? Uh, look, look over here. Look, and look, look, really? Look at your son. Okay. <laughs> okay, really, I knew about that, but I don't think I had much to do with it. Uh, yeah, I... Okay, I, I've got a good question. When you first got here, and they started briefing you, basically what they told you to do was to build a, a pump house and a water system that would supply enough water to, cool, to, to serve a small city, right? I knew the amount, although they didn't, uh, I knew that before I came here. They, they gave me all that information before I left Wilmington, I think. And uh, so I knew what we were going to have to work with. And uh, the water flows and the generation, we had an emergency generator. Uh, the powerhouse to start up, I knew what the second day circuits. That was all information I came out here with. So I didn't have to, no one told me about that. I mean, but, but it says yeah. get the job done. <laughs> Tell me about, you know, because that was an era where people were doing big projects that had never been done before without as much, many constraints, without as many rules as there are now. So, I mean, were you pretty much free to do whatever you wanted to do technically? I, I was, uh, uh, yeah, I was free to do what I wanted. I didn't have a boss out here most of the time. Uh, Lyman Darling was my boss, and he was traveling around getting operating crews and uh, things like that. Did you have uh, any problems getting material that you needed? Well, I can't, I would say really not because uh, Litchfield, the area engineer doing the construction, if uh, we needed something, he he was he did some nice jobs <laughs> for us. Yeah, I remember one time I, I I don't know this was 145 getting the square D switch. I don't know if you need to know about that or not. <laughs> but uh, why not? Yeah, well, us about it. Uh, as I told you, we had to do that building a lot of it without getting the drawings from Wilmington. And one of the things that the drawing, the, we knew that it was required was a square E switch for the power. And uh, so it wasn't there, and Liz says, I'll get it. So he, he set an order for the square D switch. And I don't know if that afternoon or the next one, uh, uh, they called him up front and they said, Liz, what in the world are you doing? And he says, well, what's the matter? He says, well, we just got a, a call back on that uh, square D switch. The Army is uh, happened to open up a transport to get it in to get it out here. <laughs> well, we didn't visualize that. We thought it was, a square D switch isn't that big. So, but we were able to temporarily wire around and cancel that order. But that is the way we could get stuff. Uh, he had... We had a hundred percent priority. Uh, Manhattan Project did, and everybody else I heard of said if they run into a Manhattan Manhattan Project, they just gave up. <laughs> so it was a different time. I mean, the, the era at at that time. I mean, what's the difference between what you were doing, constructing a plant like this, and say nowadays, if you were if you're in the nuclear industry right now. Is it, is it, was it a lot easier to get things done back then? Difference between then and now? Well, there's not much at the finish because I could visit the place. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. I had crews doing all the work. Now uh, I come out here and I find the power equipment has basically been removed except for the, I guess, the river pump house. Uh, I've been taken for a tour through the reactor area, which I didn't tour much at that time. I was busy with my own affairs, and I let the reactor supervisor handle his. But uh, I've tried to find him some 
time, but I, I think I know his name, but I'm not sure of who, he, and I've never been able to locate him. Well, actually, could you compare the urgency and the priority of building this reactor area to your subsequent jobs, such as Savannah River? Well, we did everything we could to get this one on quick. It was simple in respect to some of the things, but it was not sure that it would start. So D area, the next one, had all the chemical water treatments and the refrigeration and things that, that we might need. Uh, the hopes was that that was a lot more work and equipment, uh, and uh, it would take a lot more time. So the effort was to get this area going fast and uh, we'll get the others as well as we could, but they had to lag if we needed them. But they, it turned out we didn't need the uh, water filtration. Uh, well, we had to have full filtration, but the chemical water treatment, big plant, and the refrigeration we didn't need, and a few other things. So uh, that went fairly easy, too. Was there... Did you notice a big difference in the amount of restrictions, rules, and regulations that you had to comply with in your later projects after World War II? After, uh, World War II? Well, I can't think of many restrictions that were put on me. <laughs> I did have to, uh, they, as soon as uh, the war ended, Wilmington wanted to take me back. They go along with them wanted to take me back to Wilmington for something else. And in 1945, they did. They transferred me back out there. But up at that time, my job was just trying to transfer records and get somebody to, as a replacement. And uh, they sent in somebody to replace me to kind of as a general supervisor for all the hundred days. You were, uh, when you were here and the plant was operating and you were getting it online and you knew that it was producing the plutonium that would be used uh, in the atomic bombs, what, um, what was your feeling at that time in 1943 in the middle of the war about that? How did you feel about that process? I didn't have any feelings about it. We were just trying to get, uh, we knew we were trying to make plutonium, but the bomb hadn't been dropped. We didn't know what they were going to uh, We knew we, they were going to try to build it because they told me that. But as far as any progress or anything on that, uh, I didn't get any information on that, really. That was outside of my line. Well, how did you feel uh, after the bomb had been dropped? Well, I felt good about it because we felt that it would save uh, our boys could come home. We might save us a million casualties. And we'd see that uh, to get a surrender, we thought the bomb was a good thing. How do you feel about it today? Do you still feel it was a good thing? Yeah. But not everybody does, fortunately. <laughs> and, uh, well, how, how do you feel about the attitude, current attitude, about the nuclear industry? I mean, you, you, you guys you know, really came up with something wonderful in a lot of ways. And now people, you know, there's a lot of different opinions about the nuclear industry. Do you think people have, have, are unduly concerned? Well, I've run into that because I have been at uh, parties or something with people, and they could say, how could you do that? Well, I says, boy, I thought I was, yeah, I worked on it, and I was glad to work on it. I did the best I could because I felt it was the right thing. But they now don't realize the conditions, I guess, we were working on it. And uh, they've, I've been criticized for even working on the bomb job. How do you feel about uh, the nuclear industry today? Are you, or would you like to see more nuclear power plants? I tell you, I after I went back there and got on some of the other, DuPont kind of put me on as a troubleshooter because I could analyze situations and uh, 
I got completely away from the nuclear industry. And uh, no, I'm too old <laughs> and too tired to try to do anything much more and just take it easy. You were here when the reactor came online. Uh, do you remember that night and what, and what happened? Uh, well, as far as I knew, uh, the cooling water went fine. And I went home. I didn't know that they, I don't know how long it took the reactor to go down. I didn't know about that till the next day. And then uh, well, what it was. Well, what happened that caused the. Well, then I was told about it. And uh, in addition to all the work that the reactor people were doing, trying to figure out what would happen, and they thought it might be a possibility of the water treatment or something. Well, when, when the reactor came online, initially, uh, everything was successful, everything looked okay, is that right? Yeah, I never knew when it came on. So to you, it was just, hey, everything's working fine, and... and it was just another work day. If he hadn't have triggered it that day, he would the next day, and he could. We just had to keep the cooling water going. But you knew that it had been triggered, is that right? I did... Uh, know that he might trigger it that day. I was just out there in case it did, to, not to do anything, but just to... Uh, well, after it was triggered and then uh, everything appeared to be okay, yeah. how long was it before someone came to you and said, we have a problem? Well, I don't know because uh, all that was done with the reactor group. And... They didn't know just which way to go. They were going to all the scientists and things like that and trying to solve the problem. And then they wanted to do anything they could with uh, water to see that maybe it was laying down some sort of a deposit or something. So they did involve us in uh, making some water checks. Uh, but really, we were not much impacted involved in that problem. So the reactor was started, everything was fine, and the reactor starts to shut down, and uh, no one knows what's going on, and they contacted you to see? As far as I was concerned, or my crew, they didn't know it, because their job didn't involve anything on the reactor. And as long as we could keep cooling water, we were happy to... I, that was an unfortunate situation on that reactor loading, but it didn't really, in the end, involve us at all. You were just interested in making sure that the cooling water continued, regardless of the state of the reactor. It day. didn't matter what the reactor did. They could shut it down if they wanted to. We had to keep the <laughs> water going. So, yeah, you're right. I didn't have to worry about that. How about if we, were, were there any problems you can remember? That, that, you know, because it was wartime, you couldn't, could you always get anything you needed, ever? Did you ever have to do any little Rube Goldberg jury rigging? Well, it seemed like uh, that uh, I must have not had much trouble uh, getting things straightened out, because I, me I remember arguing with male whites or whether they ought to, tear a pump down to see what was the matter with it. And uh, I remember one of them, uh, they would do it, even if they didn't think they ought to. And uh, I remember one that we argued a while, and finally he said, okay, I'll take it apart. There was a pair of underwear in it. <laughs> I knew it wasn't working right. <laughs> you ever remember needing something and not being able to get it? Uh, I don't know quite know how to answer that because if we needed something and couldn't get it, and working with Litchfield, we had to improvise something to do that job, and he'd get the stuff to do that. It's like that squared E switch. We ended up just wiring that thing through manually, and we didn't have to have it because we knew what it should do. And if we could rig up something that would do the same thing, we did it if we couldn't get it. So you're, you were interested in getting the job done and doing workarounds if you had to. Yeah, right. And uh, 
Oh, they were stuff like pump alignment and uh, 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 settings and so forth that under certain circumstances to heat up and get out of alignment and they had to be, the supports and stuff changed. That is something I was familiar with and they always changed me. And uh, I think I was very fortunate because the area engineer doing the job was very anxious to turn out a workable thing that would do the job. And uh, he would make those changes. Uh, I didn't have much contact with Wilmington, although I'd call him, I'd try to expedite some more <laughs> information. But I knew what what was needed to be done as well as they did, so <laughs> almost. So if the design gr group was slow, we went ahead with it anyway. Did most of the people working out here have that same attitude of let's get the job done, let's, let's make it work? The construction people uh, with Litchfield and under, yes. They, they wanted to get it done, they wanted to do it in a manner that would make it work. And uh, I was fortunate that way. I didn't have to push anybody. Was, was the morale high? Did the people feel good uh, working, even though most of them probably didn't realize what they were really working on? Uh, some, yes. We imparted a bunch of operators from some of the DuPont plants to get some of a quality that could handle the job. And some of those to start with were not too happy, I don't think, about that transfer. But they did their job and I guess later stayed on and uh, appreciated it. But it took a while for somebody to come from, say, Lush, Tennessee, out here and get in the dust storm or something <laughs> and think it, that this was a good deal. Ah, good question. The dust storms. Did you, ha did you have any problem with pump and pumps and equipment and machinery during those dust storms? Because you had some pretty bad storms out there, right? With equipment? Uh, we had some, and... Uh, we had more with D area for some reason as refrigeration machines. We had, went through quite a uh, session with those, but uh, we were able to figure out a way to run them, and uh, we didn't need them. <laughs> we made that all right. But uh, no, the equipment was pretty good. We did all right. 